I'm John Skinner, and this supports my online flounder course at saltstrong.com skinner. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, including a link to a video on how to tie the rig. You know, there was so much fog in the forecast this particular morning, uh, I really didn't feel comfortable uh, doing much else. Uh, and yeah, at times it got really foggy and then it did lift, but um, hey, you know what? Uh, I wasn't going to get in trouble doing this. So uh, this was my choice for the morning, and I, I really like this kind of environment. Uh, check out this bar. You know, it just it, it seems like it goes on forever. And that really gives me the chance to cover a lot of ground. You know, if you think about boat fishing or kayak fishing for fluke or flounder, however you want to call them, uh, you know, if you have no drift and you're not covering ground, you typically don't do well. Um, so if I'm shore fishing or bar wading or whatever I'm doing, yeah, I want to be able to cover some ground as well. And this kind of setting uh, where I can just keep walking and trying different spots, it's um, allowing me to cover a lot of ground, expose my rig uh, potentially to a lot of fish, and it often works out well. And to my right, a little ways out, there's a channel, and on the other side, uh, the land that you can see and then sometimes not see because of the fog is, uh, it's a barrier island, and on the other side of that is the ocean. So it's a setting that's uh, seen in many parts of the country in different places where there's fluke all up and down the east coast and the gulf and, and so forth. So. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great setting for fluke because uh, I'm not too far from an inlet, so you've got that water pouring into the bay. It brings bait, and uh, you, know, you can see that there's a lot of variation in depth. I'm going from nothing to, uh, as I mentioned, there's a channel out in front, and uh, fluke love edges, and uh, this place is loaded with them. All right, so you saw I was walking, walking. Why did I stop here? Uh, I've got a rip. Uh, to the right, ooh, where I was walking out, uh, I really didn't have that, so I was kind of working my way towards a rip, and yeah, I look at this, and wow, a few cranks, boom, I'm in. Can't be that easy, and uh, yeah, it's not. Yep, wrong species, sea robin, and... Uh, well, a couple of months ago, there were not many of these in the bay, and it's just more and more, and uh, I'm going to edit a lot of them out, but I'm going to show some entertaining uh, bits with them because uh, there's just so many of them. I end up um, having to really try to work through them. I often get a question, you know, is there anything I can do when there's a lot of sea robins? I don't have an answer for it. The only answer I have is move. Move away from them. I don't know of anything that catches fluke that doesn't also catch sea robins. So uh, if you're in an area where they're really thick and if you just keep catching them, uh, I, I don't see any option except to just uh, try to get away from them. So as I'm retrieving, you're going to see a lot of hook sets there. Quite honestly, I'm not sure how many of those are hits and how many of those are bottom grabs. And the bottom's a little bit irregular. There's sometimes there's muscles, there's things. Uh, and you know what? When a fluke just latches on, a lot of times that just feels like a little bit of weight. Not much different than hitting something on the bottom. So just set the hook. Uh, you know, hook sets, they don't cost anything. So uh, you know, might as well give a swing. And uh, hey, many times it ends up being a fish. So that fish was right on the channel edge, not too far out in front of me. And uh, if you notice, the sea robin hit out on the end of the cast. And uh, yeah, this first fluke of the morning, it's only the second cast, but uh, this first fluke, that hit much closer. And um, yeah, it, you really need to work it all the way in. Uh, you know, sometimes they are out in the deeper stuff, but a lot of times they're along the edges. You just got to keep it working all the way. Sometimes they'll follow it over the ledge right into the shallows. Okay, so you see that bait on there? Yeah, that's one of Gulp's new colors, uh, Blue Fuse. That's a 5-inch jerk shad. Uh, I used a Blue Fuse out in the ocean. The f actually, the first time I used it, it did quite well. So, uh, yeah, I didn't hesitate to bring it on the inside, use it in the bay, and see how that, that was going to work out. 
Uh, you know, I, I kind of like bright colors. To me, with the fluke, uh, a lot of times it comes down to getting their attention. And, um, yeah, so I, I'm going to give that a shot this trip and, and see how that's going to work. Now right again, the fish hit close. Uh, yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit of discipline to not like blow off the end of the cast, or you know, just to make sure you stay down in that strike zone uh, as you get close and hit those ledges. And yep, uh, oh yeah. So this was, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, you can see I am not a soccer player, not looking good for baseball here either. Um, but I'm going to get that back. All right, so that's one of the things I noticed about these. Um, and you know, all right, I'm not sure. I don't want to make a generalization here, but it seems like sometimes um, these gulps were in the tub. They were in the liquid. They weren't in the packages. And I've noticed a couple times that those sometimes are softer than the ones in the packages. I can tell you that um, these were a little bit on the soft side, and you're going to see that over and over, that these things are going to, like, come off like that one did. Uh, I was able to grab it you know put it back on it and it's fine I mean it's it's still quite usable but you know if it comes off where you can't reach it well, and you, you lose it you've got to put another one on or sometimes after you catch three four five fish on it then it really gets chewed up and, and then you, you have to go put on a new one No, so my limit's 19 inches, and uh, that's definitely a keeper. So pretty happy about that. If I can get uh, two like that for a meal, that would be great, and it's good to get one early. So note here, uh, when I make the cast and that thing hits the water, I'm just going to sit there and make contact with it, and I'm just letting it sink to the bottom. I'm watching the line, uh, waiting to see a little bit of a twitch that's going to indicate that I've hit the bottom. And, you know, the, the jig's only three-quarters of an ounce, and it's carrying two of those five-inch jerk shads. And, uh, yeah, it takes a little time to get down there. As soon as it hits, I'm going to start the retrieve. Um, certainly, uh, you, you, you want to be near the bottom. That's where the strike zone is. So uh, just let it hit the bottom, start the retrieve. That seems to work fine. And you don't want to be dragging bottom here because you'll pick up a lot of weed. You want to be swimming you know, a foot or two above it. Hey, check out the, the foam on top. That stuff's like not moving. And it's kind of interesting because that's like really still water. Yet where I'm casting, there's current. So, you know, when I talk about edges, I'm often talking about depth edges where you've got uh, some kind of change like a slope. But there's a, you know, another thing going on here where I've got water moving on the outside. It's not moving on the inside. So there's definitely a current edge there, too. So at times you're going to see bait scattering. And uh, this is great. You know, there's, there's bait. There's all kinds of um, nice structure in terms of the bottom, in terms of the water movement. And, yeah, it's no wonder this fish here.
So you can see for the last several fish, I've got uh, that blue fuse jerk shot on both the bucktail and the teaser because it was doing so well on the teaser. Uh, I wasn't getting anything on the bucktail. I decided to you know put it on both and yep. So now you see both are getting hit. Uh, yeah, so far I'm like I'm liking this color. Like I said, it did well in the ocean. That doesn't mean that it's going to do well in shallow water, but it's, it's working well here. So in really close again, but on the previous cast, the fish hit out uh, near the end of the cast. So, yeah, I mean, there's times when they're hitting in close like that. I feel like I should just short cast in the bar and just pound that edge the whole time. But uh, quite a few fish being caught uh, at the end of the cast as well. So uh, I'll just keep making full casts. The only thing is, it seems like, especially this trip, I ended up getting more um, sea robins on the end of the cast but hey, they're all over the place. All right, so that's three and three casts, and you know what? One hit on the end of the cast, that one hit about halfway, and the one before this hit in, in close. So, you know, I guess they're, they're all kind of spread out. Okay, here we go with the sea robins. If you look carefully, I can count three, but there's going to be more to follow. So they kind of followed that fluke in, and yeah, when they're in big numbers like this, wow, it can get tough. Yes, you see, they're just gathering around that fluke that got dropped in the water. Um, okay, here's a fourth one has just come in, and uh, uh, there's another one coming in on the right, so there's one there. So, yeah, there, there's five. Uh, that's the most I can see in, in one shot is uh, five of them. So, wow. Yeah, that's uh, hard to believe you can catch any fluke through that.
I really like these gloves. Uh, you know, I got them for sun protection, but they, they've got like a little bit of rubber on the inside, so they're good for gripping. Um, the, your hands don't get warm at all. They're, they're very, very comfortable. Um, when you don't see me wearing them, I just plain forgot to bring them because um, uh, there's no reason not to wear them. And those are buffs, and I have a, a link to those in the video description, as well as links to uh, the rest of the wading clothes. So these clothes are very comfortable. It keeps the sun off. I don't uh, really have to use sunscreen too much because I'm so covered up. All right, something interesting happens here. So you see one of the gulps fell off. Here comes a sea robin, comes in, grabs that gulp uh, that was just falling down. So now the sea robin is kind of interested in what I'm doing and sees the fluke go down, checks that out, then you know, decides that's not something he's interested in. He's just, you know, he's going to react to anything going down. Um, but there's another piece of gulp that had fallen off on a previous fish, so it's going to go over and boom, it's going to grab that too. So... Yeah, now it's uh, very happy with me because it's gotten those two gulps. And uh, th so this thing is just going to come over. It's, this thing's basically my pet now because uh, it, it's like I've accidentally fed it. So now it's just going to hang around hoping that I drop more things into the water for it. Yeah, these, uh, these things are really, they get out of control at times. All right, now this is really interesting. Okay, so uh, there goes one fish two fish, so um, I'm on a bite here. Yeah, these, these are small fish. Third cast, sea robin. Um, and I've tilted my camera down because I want to get the retrieve in. Now, uh, in the background, you can hear this loud boat. It's going to be getting closer and closer. But, you know, I got two fluke, and then the third cast was a sea robin. I want to focus on the reel. So anyway, you'll get to see the retrieve here. That was the whole point. You know, just so you can see how slow I'm turning that handle. You know, I'm just you know, really moving it along slowly. And, um, but I've got this boat coming and it is loud. I mean, it's way louder. So you see, I hooked up another fluke here, but he's got twin 400s and he's gonna come right over uh, where I'm fishing. And you can't see that because I'm so focused on the reel on this particular cast, but trust me, he went right over where I was fishing. And what's interesting is, this shut me down. This was like lights out for 30 minutes. I don't think I caught another fluke for a half an hour. Um, I'm very surprised because I never th really consider that they're spooked easily or anything like that. But come on, it was, you know, three out of four casts that I had one. And actually the fourth cast I didn't have one was because of a sea robin. And then that was it. Done. I, I didn't get anything for quite a while after it ran over very loud. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just an observation. Okay, not a fluke, uh, a sundial, also called a window pane flounder. 
y- you know, I th- every time I see one of these, I think of these sand dabs that I ate in San Francisco on some pier, and they were one of the most delicious things ever. And for some reason, I I think these are similar. I could be wrong. Maybe somebody from California can tell me I'm wrong or right or whatever. But uh, anyway, they're so thin, I don't think you could get enough meat off them to do anything. But yeah, every once in a while you catch one. They were much more plentiful when I was a little kid. used to see them along the sound right on the beach in the evenings all the time. Ah, and here's that second keeper to make a meal. So, yeah, I'm happy with this. I, I, I just need two. So, um, yeah, and you know what? Th- there's those gloves again. It's really easy to grab that fish like that. And, yep, that's definitely good. So I'm happy about that. All right, you see, I'm not using the jerk shads anymore because I've run out. Um, that was one of those jars, those 14-ounce containers. And, uh, you know, in, in its defense, um, I've edited out a bunch of the smaller fluke and... Probably for every fluke I've caught this trip, I've had a sea robin. I mean, there's a lot of sea robins, so I'm catching fish definitely most casts. Uh, I, I mean, you count the sea robins and all the smaller fluke and everything else, so I'm getting a lot of action. But yeah, I, I went through all of those five inch jerk shads, and uh, so I'm back using the sand eels now. And um, I could say definitely uh, for this setting, the two best baits um certainly the sand eel has been way up there but you know what these uh these blue fuse jerk shads did real well today and uh, yeah i'm sure there's other colors that would have worked well but um yeah if i was going out again to do this i'd definitely go out with uh with more of those than i came out with this trip and one thing i noticed on this trip is um so th- the current has turned around it was incoming to start now it's outgoing and I, there was definitely an uptick in size uh on this outgoing current and I often don't target the outgoing current what I do is I I try to you know get a couple of hours of incoming because I'm always afraid that with outgoing you make it so much weed coming through that you basically can't fish it can be very difficult to fish and you can see there's a fair amount of weed here but it's not bad I mean I'm I'm getting some I guess that looks like there's quite a bit it's still it's fishable it can be much much worse than what you're seeing so I don't typically uh, show up and expect to fish only outgoing because if I do that I might get dirtier water although this particular season it's not as much of a problem uh, but certainly the weed can shut you right down but um, definitely I saw some better fish once the current started going out So earlier I mentioned bait fish. Uh, there are certainly peanut bunker around because I'm seeing those balled up and scattering. Uh, I'm seeing some sand eels. There's always spearing around and certainly uh, you know, I'm seeing those. So it's a little different than earlier in the season where maybe you're not seeing those bait fish and the fish are <coughs> at that time feeding more on uh, crabs and shrimp and so forth. And at that time, uh, if you look back on my videos from a couple of months prior to this, 
I was using the uh, three inch gulp shrimp a lot because I use those when the fish are feeding on crabs and shrimp. But you know what, once they're on sand eels, other bait fish, yeah, then I'm giving them more of a, a bait fish profile. And uh, yeah, that's, that's worked out well with places. You know what, this is late in the summer or it's, it's late August actually. And there's just a lot of bait in the area. It brings these fish in. It, it makes for fast paced fishing like this. Like I said, the only downside on this particular trip was that there were so many sea robins, but hey, and I can't complain about the fluke fishing. It was really good. I caught a lot of fish. So, so hey, if you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to check out my online flounder or fluke fishing course at saltstrong.com/skinner. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. And thanks for watching.